I've made this spell for discrete stimming. Holding or wearing the enchanted object does the same thing for your brain that stimming does. It should not be a requirement, but some people are unfortunately in situations where they need such a thing. Now I want to make a spell that does something like that, but with compression. As in, you wear a ring and it feels like you're being wrapped in a weighted blanket. Any ideas? Hmm, that's a tough one. You might have more luck if you start with something physically similar to an actual weighted blanket, like a regular blanket or a shawl, and see if you can echo the same mental health benefits that way. Like stealth blankets? Yeah, that's, that's a good place to start. One sec. Stoughton Street Coven, how can I help you? Hi, Mike. It's Lindsay, the girl who tried to kidnap Bob. Don't hang up. Well, this will be interesting. I seem to recall banning you from the coven for you and your sister's toxic behavior. Yep. Totally get that. I am not asking to come back. I just need a tiny bit of magical advice. Redemption arcs are a lot easier with help. What's the situation? So, the food shelf where I'm volunteering? We had a woman come in and she's being stalked by an ex-boyfriend. Or maybe it was an ex-husband. I don't know. I didn't get the full story. Anyway, she heard that I give away enchanted good luck charms. And they actually do work, even if it's just... A little bit. I mean, we haven't run out of toilet paper since I put one in the bathroom. Anyway, she's asking for a charm about magical protection from her ex, and I cannot for the life of me remember which ingredients are needed. Yeah. Okay. You got a pen and a paper ready? So what you're gonna need is- Hi, excuse me. Is this the witch coven? The one in charge is on the phone, but I can help. Great. I need a love potion. We don't do that here. Why not? That's old school magic. Should be way easy for you. Love potions and similar spells create artificial emotions of affection in the subject and cross all boundaries of consent. They're basically date rape drinks. We can create a love magnet, which is essentially a good luck charm specific to romantic situations. I don't want that. I need my ex to fall back in love with me. Lindsay, did your client mention that her stalker is a blonde with a bad mustache and ugly but expensive loafers? Yeah, actually. Why? I think I have a more permanent solution. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, we can't help you because love potions wear off after a few weeks. Anyway, you want the fairy sorceress over at Cafe Latte? She is much more powerful. Can make anything she does last for years, even your entire lifetime. Thank you. All you had to do was say that, little missy. No need to be embarrassed. Lindsay, I'm going to call you back. That seems like a rude thing to do to Bob. Way ahead of you, and if she's annoyed, I'll make it up to her. Hey, Bob. So don't be mad, but I may have sent a creeper after you. Are you the fairy sorceress? The witches over on Stoughton Street referred me to you about a love potion. Yes, I did get a call from Michael about that. I understand you're trying to get your ex to come back to you. I thought Bob didn't do love spells. She doesn't, but she is a general who respects and rewards good thinking on the fly. Yeah, I tried doing all the usual things. I'll admit I screwed up, but I apologize. I bought her flowers, chocolates, planned a whole makeup dinner at a fancy restaurant. But she said, not this time, you manipulative shit. Can you believe that? Now she won't even let me talk to her. She's blocked my number. She called the cops on me when I tried to find her hotel. Called security whenever I go to her work. I see. Now, in order for me to do this spell with true efficacy and permanence. I'm going to need the full story and your names, yours and that of your ex. Oh, okay. I see what she's doing now. So I'm Todd Jones and she's Helen Smith. Excellent. And what exactly set off this final defiance? So I love her, right? I know we're meant to be together forever, but she keeps pulling away from me, trying to do her own thing. I'm trying to, you know, gently nudge her into being proper wife material, you know, discouraging her from her career. She doesn't need one if I'm looking after her. And trying to get her to stay at home and care for the house that we had moved in together. It's not the man's job to do laundry or cook or clean or any of that. That's her job. And she'll have a much easier time of it if she's not out in the workforce. That's just common sense. I'm sure that was all done in reverent care of her self-esteem. <sighs> Seriously. And that persuaded her to leave you? No, we compromised and had her work part-time instead of full-time. She broke up with me when she found out I messed with her birth control. <laughs> we talked about kids and we both want them, but she keeps saying it's not the right time, that she wants to travel a bit first and you know, 
whatever. And when girls start talking like that, putting their own lives first, it's only a matter of time before they break up with you. So I needed to lock her down now so she wouldn't leave me. Problem is she caught me swapping out her pills, practically screamed her head off. Just to make sure that I fully understand the situation. You attempted to turn your girlfriend into a stay-at-home mother in a time when she wanted to focus on her own career and pleasures, and you decided to accomplish this by illegally tampering with her reproductive care. That's illegal? Yes, but don't worry, there's no need to get the police involved. I will craft a spell that will ensure that everyone gets what they deserve as soon as I get paid. Right, of course. Gotta compensate you for your time. How much does something like this go for? Fifty, sixty dollars? One hundred. For my 100% efficacy rate. Fine. Here's your money. Thank you, Todd Jones. He who is now cursed to never speak another word to Helen Smith or any other person until you respect their boundaries. You'll also be unable to write, email, text, or communicate with them in any way. You will not be able to interfere in their lives yourself or through third-party intermediaries until you meet the aforementioned requirement of respecting those persons' boundaries and their basic personhood. I feel like Helen also needs a little boost, given how much shit she's had to put up with. Something like luck and safety for her next round of romances? That is a very good suggestion, Jennifer Charles, but I do try to avoid blessing people without their permission. Didn't we hear about this from Lindsay? Mike might be able to get through to her and ask. I'll call him. You can go now. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that, schmucko. Yes, Helen, he will not be bothering you again until he becomes a respectable person, if that ever happens. Are you sure you don't want me to give you your little blessing, too? He did technically pay for it. No, you're just happy that he's out of your life? Very well, then. Good luck, and tell Lindsay that this should count as another mark in her favor. Hello, what can I get for you? Hi, uh, I heard you have spells or potions that can help with mental health. In a sense, yes, but if you're suffering from, say, depression, they're only going to be effective alongside proper medication from a doctor. It's an enhancement, not a replacement. So, you can't just magically get rid of all my disabilities and uh, not have me take a cocktail of six-plus pills every morning? No. This is not a pharmacy or a hospital, and I am not a medical professional. The mind is a delicate thing. I was a war sorceress. I don't have the training to remove something like depression or anxiety or bipolar disorder and keep the rest of the mind intact. There have been several cases where well-meaning fairies have tried to interfere in cases like this, but end up completely fumbling it. In the worst cases, the patient becomes a vegetable. Yikes. Having said that, a lot of my drinks do incorporate magical ingredients that have been known to help with mental health issues when taken alongside that cocktail. Such ingredients and spells can also help curb side effects, although again, I am not a doctor and that is not a guarantee. The Stone Street Witches might have some other things that can help. Mike and Nicole have been especially good about creating spells and enchantments that help with various mental health symptoms. Cool. Um, what do you have for someone with the five pack of depression, anxiety, bipolar, PTSD, and OCD? Dragonfire helps with depression, pixie dust helps with anxiety, banshee blood tends to counter many side effects taken by bipolar medications, hellfire mushrooms have been known to help with OCD, but they're grown in hell and I don't use them for my drinks because they taste vile. And a therapist is best for PTSD. Can we just pour all the things you do have into a latte? I would recommend something stronger to cover or blend the tastes. Either an Americano, if you like it bitter, or a mocha for sweetness. Mocha, please and thank you. And where are those witches at? Did you redecorate? A little bit. The menus were holding on to the walls through spit and stubbornness, so we've replaced them. Mostly everything else is the same, though. We're still learning how to do basic video editing. I don't like sudden change. Well, I still have your cozy chair right there in the corner, and everything else is the same. Hot chocolate? Yes, please. Hi, Ben. Hi, Miss Nicole. Did you know that Jack the Ripper was probably a Polish barber? Really? They found DNA on one of his victim shawls. Ben, that is not how we greet people. He said hello, then he started a really interesting conversation. Is that not how we're supposed to greet people? Not with murder. Mom, it's okay. Unlike you, Miss Nicole is not boring. Excuse me? I mean, she's an autistic witch who's also a Buddhist and hangs out at a fairy cafe. 
hard not to be boring in comparison, and I'm 300 years old. He gets it. When did Nicole acquire a child? When you were going viral beating up a mugger? Ah, I have your rock. It's enchanted to help you with the stimming. It should do the exact same thing for your brain that stimming does just by holding it. Wow. It's like my brain is being scratched. Nicole, here's your hot chocolate, and what are we getting for you two? Medium mocha with blackberry, please. Can I have a cold chai, but don't put any ice in the cup, please? And scan your card. I'll get those started for you. We're heading to your grandmother's tonight for dinner, so make sure you wear that sweater that she made for you. Ugh. Uh, yeah, Mom, I can't. Too itchy. It is not. I have felt that sweater myself. It's very comfy. And it's your favorite color. I'm jealous. Yeah, it is. It's a really good color, but when it touches my skin, it, it feels like a nail blanket. And then I'm going to get quiet, which you like, and then cranky, which you don't, and then I'm going to say something really clever, but also kind of mean, and then you and or grandma will be in a huff, and then I'll get in trouble. You are being dramatic. He's describing sensory issues. It's a common side effect of autism. Don't make him wear the sweater. It's just a sweater. It's fine. His grandmother made it for him, and it'll mean a lot to her if she sees you wear it. She wants to see her grandson tortured? Has television really gotten that bad that she needs the entertainment? I mean, the writer's strike certainly doesn't help. You know, I'm trying to handle this autism thing. I am, but this isn't that. It's just him being picky and dramatic. And if it's part of his autism, then he needs to get over it. All right. I dare you. What? Bob, can you curse someone to have sensory overload issues? I can. I can even make it a mirror of what your son experiences so you know exactly what sets him off and to what degree. Perhaps the two of you can come up with solutions together. <laughs> I give you a week. I give her ten minutes. I can make it seven years. You know what? Fine. Do your worst. Done. So that's why you keep your hair so short. Yep. Oh, and you would think that because of that, I would love going to the hair cutters. But no, the sound of scissors so close to my ear is somehow worse. Seriously? It's okay. Just listen to a podcast or music with wireless headphones. It'll drown it out. Or an audiobook. Well, that's just rude. More than having a tantrum in their chair. May I please borrow a ponytail holder? Here you go. And your drinks. Good luck. Welcome to Cafe Latte. What can I get for you? I'm still deciding. Man, why do you have all these sugar and calorie and carb stuff on the menu? It just stresses people out and contributes to the whole fad weight loss culture thing. A lot of our customers have dietary restrictions or special needs and need to know exactly what's in the food that they're consuming so they don't have any negative health consequences or even die. That's a bit dramatic, don't you think? Oh, thank God you have the carbon sugar info right on the menu. That's going to save me so much time. Are you one of those Weight Watchers people? No, I'm one of those diabetic people who need to know exactly how much sugar I'm consuming and creating so I don't accidentally overdose on insulin and die. Please don't curse me. I have a family. As far as I know, you haven't done any harm through your ignorance, so you're off the hook. <sighs> Whatever. Can I get a dragon fruit tea, please, from Vakreem? I'll just get a dark roast. Where's your other fairy employee? He explicitly asked for today off. Finally. I've been waiting months for this. Blackstone presents Citadel by C.M. Alonji. This book is read by Emily Lawrence.